All right, go ahead. Uh, what I see in the commercials today is a bull mastiff boxer hybrid mixed in with whatever they've been mixing for the last 15 years. Uh, it's ridiculous because now what they're doing is cropping years is illegal So in Europe. So what's going to happen is you're going to see a lot of mongrel-looking corsos coming from Italy or in Italy. Well, you do already. Champion uh, Chino or Kino, whatever his name is. I mean, if that dog's a multiple world champion, then I don't want a dog like that. I'd rather go pick dog a pound. You know, it look better. Like He would look more of a corso than that dog. That dog's like a boxer hybrid. I mean, the, the judges... The Italian judges are putting them up left and right. The dogs are like a multiple world champion. That's ridiculous. And, and there's plenty of blood down from that dog, and there's plenty of blood down from dogs just like him. And I really don't want anything to do with the boxer. I, if I want a boxer, I'll go buy a boxer from Germany. I don't want to buy uh, a, like a backyard breeder's uh, pet quality boxer from Puglia, you know. Because I don't think they're looking to get dogs from me. <laughs> I don't think they're shits on three uh, boxers, you know. I think they're more like uh, uh, like pets from from uh, from the pound, you know, that they got. But uh, the bull mastiff, why you would use a bull mastiff when there's already a dog called the bull mastiff? Why are you making bull mastiffs again? I mean, that's an English mastiff bred to uh, to an English bulldog. Why would you want to put an English bulldog in an English mastiff in a county of course it would. And the dog is derived from a Neapolitan mastiff. Yep. It's two different breeds. The Neo breeders use uh, English mastiffs, but they don't use English bulldogs. I mean, that's about the worst breed you could use is an English bulldog for the breed into a mastiff. I mean, you may uh, you know, use them boxers, bull mastiffs. All you're doing is making like a... Uh, like a poor man's band dog, you know. That's all you're doing. You know, you're making some some crappy uh, bulldog bulldog mastiff cross. You know, I mean, and we all know these dogs have some sort of pit bull in them or Amstaff. So you're even making it worse. You're making a pit bulldog mastiff. All right, where's the corso in it? There's no corso left. <laughs> There's no corso. What? What? Why are you calling them? You, you keep breeding those show dogs, I'll keep the real Connie Depresses that my father brought over from, from Italy and that he bred since 1972-74. Those are the real Connie Depresses. I mean, if you want to, you know, it, I mean, a lot of people don't like what I say because I'm telling the truth. You know, I really don't care. I'm going in a different direction because I don't like... Uh, if I want an American Bulldog, I'll go buy an American Bulldog. Or I'll go cross an American Bulldog and make a separate breed. I'm not going to I'm not gonna perpetuate fraud and sell people Boxer Bulldog Mastiff mixes when they're not Corsos. You know, I mean, you can't do that. To tell you the truth, if I was a person who bought a dog from some of these breeders, I would take them to court that they didn't sell me a Corso. They're not even a Connie Depressa because they're not even, they don't even have Neo in them anymore. They just have some type of mastiff bred to a bulldog. That's not a Corso. That's, that's a band dog, a uh, pit bulldog band dog thing, you know. I mean, uh, whatever. But what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm totally disconnecting from the show crowd. And I'm going to go ahead and breed my original stock, whatever we have left over. And there is, and you know, there's a lot of dogs that are still down from the original stock. They don't want to admit it, but there is. No, there is. You know, a lot of select neighborhoods, there's still a lot of Sicilian Bronchettos, originals, that my father bred. And we're going to take it from there and see what we got to do with the courses. Right. So we, we're not even calling them courses. We're gonna call them the original name, Connie Depressa. Right. That's it. Nah, because a lot of us, some of us, I'm gonna say, definitely support you with that, and we definitely gonna go in that direction because the I, me personally, I feel the course was in trouble, and it's changing, yeah. it's evolving too fast, too fast, and it's evolving into something that is not, 
and the Italians, the Italians, a lot of show Italian breeders should be ashamed of themselves, and a lot of dog enthusiasts should be ashamed of themselves. And not only that, you brung diseases in the um in the corso that didn't exist in the corso, like the epilepsy situation, and that stuff is very dangerous, very very dangerous. Let the public know how dangerous that is, Mike. Give give them a scenario. Uh, I've had I've had an epileptic dog. I've had a, a dog that was uh, epileptic. This is a dog that I owned for 10 years, uh, American Pitbull Terrier. She had a lot of bulldog blood. And I'm thinking it comes from the bulldog, the boxer type blood, um, because that's what my, my pit bull had. A lot of bulldog, tend, like, looked like a pit bull. I mean, like a bulldog. But when she went into a seizure, this was a dog that used to sleep with her face on my face and lick me. And, I mean, she was around my son. My son was like uh, like a baby at the time, like like 18 months old. This dog went into a seizure, and she was, like, going crazy. I stuck her in a crate so she wouldn't, like, bang into all my furniture and let her have her seizure in, a, in an airline crate. And then when she started coming out of the seizure, she didn't know who I was. She was growling at me. She was going to nail me. I was like, well, I can't keep this dog. This dog, what if she has a seizure with my son around and she, she like, bites his face off, you know? This is a dog that was beautiful, beautiful temperament, but once she had the seizure, it was like she forgot who I was and she wanted to kill me. I put her to sleep that day. It, it, it killed me because I had the dog for 10 years, but... I'm telling you, that's bad news. When they have those seizures, they come out of those seizures, they don't know who you are. Those dogs think you're a stranger, and they're going to bite you. I mean, uh, uh, I know for a fact they'll bite you, because this dog loved me. This dog would protect me with her life. And all of a sudden, she didn't know me, and she wanted to kill me. You know. <laughs> so, uh, go ahead, breed those dogs. And you'll have a lot of lawsuits on your hand, because... You can't sell a dog with a genetic defect like that, and you know what's going to happen because people are going to be at the wrong place. Kids are going to be at the wrong place at the at the right time, and the kids are going to get their face chewed off, or God forbid, the dog hits a vital area on the kid and and and, and breaks open an artery, or the kids aren't, or the parents aren't home and they're still ordering the. Or maybe the parent, I don't know, it could be any scenario. Just think, if you go out and cut your grass and then you come back in, your kid's dead. And your dog's standing over it. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what are you going to do? You can't do nothing anymore. And that's the breeder's fault, because he bred that. Yeah, true. He bred that. True well, indeed. I would say that that's uh, manslaughter. That's involuntary. No, that's not even involuntary. That's That's... You knew that the dog could produce that, so that's premeditated murder, murder to me. Yeah. I mean, he, I mean uh, he, the dog's gonna, the dog's gonna chew up my, kill my my child, and then you're not gonna. Well, it's not even about the money anymore. It's about you. You. If you didn't sell me this dog, my kid would be alive right now. You know, how do you deal with that? If you sell a dog knowing that your dogs produce epilepsy, to me that's criminal. That's yeah. that that's you should be going to jail for a little bit. If you sell a dog and you that's like that that's not a responsible person. If you're selling dogs with epilepsy or could have epilepsy, you know. That's like a gun like a gun dealer giving a kid a gun. You know. And eventually a kid's gonna figure out how to pull the trigger or load the gun and kill himself. You know, that's why you don't give, you don't keep guns around kids. That dog, to me, is like a loaded weapon, ready to go off at any time once it has the epilepsy. Right. All right, well said, bro. Well said. You can't well, do that. Nah, I agree. So, with the Canada depressor, so it's basically the old lineage, lineage dogs that are, that's going to be bred, right? Am, 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 am I correct on that? All right, let me ask People want to know about the standard. So, what is the standard going to reflect? Because definitely, know I definitely know that back in the day, a lot of information wasn't revealed or wasn't acknowledged. But now that we know that the co the corso, kind of depressor, and etc. could have a dilute nose like the red nose. And all right, I'm with this in a nutshell. 
just to make people understand all the DQ colors. They can't come in that color. They can't be pure. Are you going to recognize those dogs? Oh, the co- it's just the color. It's not, a, it's not a, a different breed. If the dog's black and tan or tricolor, that's still a county depressive because historically they came in that color when we first got them. And our first litter with Kokomo, the, found- the foundation litter in America, came in that color, black and tan. They came in... They came in, uh, and then when we bred them, they produced blue and tans. Then when we bred them, they came out with red noses. I mean, and once in a while, they come out mismarked with white on their neck or white on their shoulder or on their, a blaze on their face. How can you not accept those dogs when actually that's the genetics of the dogs? So in other words, it's like... Uh, like, they don't allow white boxers, they don't allow white German shepherds, but yet there's another registry that takes them, and people breed them all day long. I see a lot of white True. boxers, and I see a lot of white German shepherds, and, uh, you know, that has, doesn't stop people. You, it, you, to me, it's just the color phase, and by breeding, by, by telling people, you can only have this, 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 and this. But that's not how it works. You're going to keep breeding these dogs. When you breed certain combos together, you're going to perpetuate black and tans. You're going to perpetuate pointed brindles. You're going to perpetuate blue and tans. You're going to have red noses from time. This dog is supposedly was the same as the Neapolitan Mastiff back in the 70s and 80s, and then they diverted and went their separate ways. Let me tell you, Neapolitan Mastiff comes with a red nose. Neapolitan Mastiff comes with a dilute nose. Neapolitan Mastiff comes in red, which we call mahogany in the ears. Comes in like a tawny color, which is a fawn, with a dilute pink nose, with a, with a, a red nose, okay? So you cannot deny, if these dogs were the same breed, how can you disallow those colors? And Neos... It's a disqualification, but they have white up the leg, they have white on the face, they breed it out, but it comes back. You know why? Because it's in the blood. It's going to come out every time. I right. Mean, I've seen males with white all the way up to their, up their, from their leg, halfway up to their elbow. I've seen males with white on their, on their, their whole nose was white. I mean, in these corsos... We know that they've been, the ones in Italy have been bred to the Marema sheepdogs. So how are you going to stop a dog that's been bred to these, to these beige and off-white dogs? How are you going to stop that? You can't. It, why are we going to disallow these dogs? Because we want to hide the fact that they have other breeds in them or they perpetuate this color? To me, it's silly. My father had the standard pretty correct except for the historically white because we didn't have a lot of Italian stuff. But what we're using with the county depressa is going to be basically a high percentage of original blood in them, okay, of the bronchial stuff. I mean, if they have 25% Italian blood, we'll work with it. We'll breed that. We'll, we'll work with it and breed it back into the original stuff. I mean, I'm not going to just be like a snob and say, no, you can't have it. Because they are, they are county depressors. They're a different type of county depressor, but they're still a county depressor. They all derive from the Neo. Right. They all come from the Neo, or they were the Neo. Whatever semantics, you know, they are the Neo. But, uh, no, it, it, that's what we're going to do. They're going to come in whatever color they come out. We're not going to breed for those colors. If some people do, they do. You know, I can't stop people. You know, they're going to do what they're going to do. I'm not going to breed for that, but if they come out with that and they look good, if they got good hips, good temperament, good sound bodies, they're nice typey heads, nice mount, you know, nice bites on them, hey, we're going to breed them. And I don't care about a Connie Corso. I don't care about a Neapolitan Mastiff. I care about this breed right here because the original name of the breed was Connie Depressa. Neapolitan Mastiff is a made-up name that they used back in the 50s because they wouldn't let them call it the molasses. The, the Italians wanted to call them the molasses. All right, hold up, Mike. Hold up, hold up, hold up. 